I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm going to talk with Richard Hogan today. You're the main man behind the airplane, I understand, right? Oh, you blame me for anything on this airplane. That's All right. Great. Well, you're the man to blame then. Last year when we looked at you, I looked at the aircraft, a, you were not flying. I understand that's changed. We'll come back to that. But also, I think you had a different engine on there then, too. So let's talk about the engine first, and then we'll come back to what that experience has been for you, Richard. That sounds great. This is a Titan IO340 engine, which is basically similar to the Lycomings that we've all flown with for years. It's a little larger displacement, and this is fuel injected. It has 180 horsepower, and uh, it looked like a good power plant little on the higher performance than the one that I had talked with you about before. We um, have a little faster performance with this engine. Now you say that and uh, that be, that's because you've actually had this one up in the air now, right? That's correct. Yes. All right, so tell me a little bit about uh, where you're at in that process and then what you experienced when you did your initial flying. Well, we have 28 hours of flight time on the airframe now. Uh, so okay. So it's a little early to be flying or at air shows, but we'll finish that up in the next couple of months. Naturally, this has been a long process because it's a new design. But the first time that it flew, the guys got a big kick out of me because I'm standing there with my camera, and as soon as it broke ground, my camera goes down <laughs> at the grass, and I'm watching the airplane fly away. A common problem for was, a new dad watching his airplane fly, but I understand. That was the case. I'm sure it was very exciting to see it go aloft. Very, very exciting. And we had a couple of concerns, it being a new design. Are the controls going to be work well? Are they going to be high stick forces? Is it going to fly well? And we've been very fortunate in there. We've, we've made a few changes. We actually reduced the aileron uh, ratio some to make it a little softer. But other than that, it was a little player, too snappy at first, was it? It was a little too okay. snappy, yes. Okay. So other than that, though, we've been very pleased. Now, there are people that will look at this airplane and go, well, you got two tails on it here. You got a canard up front and you've got, you know, sometimes they don't. A very easy is a common design that people might look at this and go, is this a very easy? No, well, no, it's not. But tell me a little bit about what you're thinking on the uh, overall configuration of the airplane. Then we'll come back to some more about your flying experience. Yes, now this is a three surface airplane. Some people call it a three lifting surface. That's not technically correct because the horizontal stabilizer primarily is there for stability. Okay. Yeah. Well, what that enables us to do is that unlike a traditional canard, we don't have to put quite so much uh, wing loading on the canard. It works more in concert with the main wing, so it can land slower, it's more docile, but we still retain the stall resistant and spin resistant characteristics of a typical canard, and that was what we were looking at. Really it's a, good low it's speed It's a little smaller wing. canard than one that would be dedicated with a canard, right? That is correct. Now we put control surfaces on this one so that we could do testing we're still not sure if we'll keep those control surfaces on the canard. On the canard, yes, because I see what looks like kind of an elevator or an aileron on the canard. Yes, and uh, you may not have that in the future. Then that's correct. Yes, right. No, normally they don't, so that's not unusual that it wouldn't have one up there. But okay, so now uh, you 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 uh, went away from the Jabiru. You added the Titan. The Titan's got quite a bit more power to you. Uh, 28 hours of flying. Uh, give me the overview about how those hours went and what you learned. Sure. The big picture is that when we first started, we just want, didn't want to overstress the airplane. We wanted to make sure that we knew what was going to happen and work our way through the flight envelope. We made our own rules that we weren't going to go over 140 or 150 knots on the first flight. By the time Ethan leveled out, he was at 160 knots, so we said, well, okay, so much for that idea. <laughs> uh, but the airplane comfortably will top out at about 200. It's very happy cruising at about 180 miles an hour, not knots. Uh, so that was in the range of what we were really hoping to have here. Um, we, in our first flights, we were coming in and landing pretty fast. We didn't want to slow it down until we had a lot of time to do slow flight. But uh, now we're at a point where we're landing in 800, 900 feet. So, okay, uh, that's pretty short distance for what for looks like an awfully clean airplane and with a big old power plant on it. It's uh, no surprise to me that it goes pretty fast, 
but I'm interested to hear that uh, that slow speed was working out for you as well. Well, that was one of our, real, our really important design issues when we first started working on this. We wanted to be able to slow the airplane down. We want to attract new pilots in, and we know that we can't give them uh, something that's going to be a handful. Let them uh, have something that's easy to land and handles at low speeds. We know it's going to be a much safer environment for them. Our number one priority in the safety area was to create that stall spin resistance. And frankly, the first time we tested that, it was a little scary I'm because sure. I'm there's sure. not a lot of things to compare it to. But uh, we just kept the stick in the center, did an approach to landing stall, and held it for 60 seconds. No stall, it just mushed. And over the next several hours of testing in the slow flight, we found that we can cross control, no adverse effects, and we still don't actually have a stall or spin tendency in the aircraft. Excellent, well those are good initial things. As you said, 28 hours in, even by the experimental standards, you've got to do at least 40, and of course you're a new project, not building an existing kit that's already been proven. So how many hours would you say you're looking to accumulate before you would say, okay, we're, we're now ready to begin the production process? We think that 80 to 100 hours of, of, of actual true test time is what we need to really feel like that we've covered all of the potential areas. Uh, Certainly by the time we're at 60 hours or so, there's not going to, we're going to be going back and retesting things multiple times. It's going to be a lot of redundancy, but that's what you do with a new design. When we looked at it last year, Richard, uh, you were you were thinking and, and oriented toward light sport. Well, the original airframe was designed so it was light sport capable. So our intentions are is to go ahead and first uh, build a few of these in this performance range and then back into the lighter versions and and build some light sport compliant versions of it. We think it fills both those niches well because of the low speed handling characteristics. We know now enough because we've been able to test at lower power settings and, and have some idea of what to expect in performance with a 120 horsepower engine. So we anticipate needing a, a climb prop to give us those, uh, to cap us out on the on the LSA compliant range. Okay, would you use a different engine on an LSA version? Yes, Okay, absolutely. so use a, a smaller, less powerful engine. Because of this big guy engine, I know you can throttle back, that's what some of the other fellows do, but with an airplane that's so slick like this, uh, you might you might have trouble staying in the speed environment. You would, and the other issue is is that we have the opportunity to take some additional weight out by using a, a smaller engine. Sure, of course, so, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, when somebody says, well, you know, I'm mighty intrigued, uh, I might want to pull the trigger, what would you tell them about when that might be? Well, our process is, is over the next year and a half, we're going to be building what we would consider captive account aircraft with uh, some people that we're calling the alpha and beta builders. As we get through that, then we'll be ready to start uh, having the, the general uh, orders come in and build them. We do want people to come to our facility and build it there so we can make sure everything's bonded properly. That makes sense. But uh, by summer 2017, We'll be uh, building those orders in in house for uh, those alpha for, beta guys. No, we're actually going to start our first alpha uh, builders are going to be starting in May or June. Oh, okay, all so, right. Well, you're pretty near on a park anyway. What kind of investment somebody would have with this? Someone can build an airplane equipped somewhat like this for between 100 and 125 thousand. Okay. And what kind of build time would it be for someone? We want them to be able to build the airframe in two to two and a half weeks. Really? Okay. And because what they're they're not going to be fabricating, they're going to be assembling and bonding. That way everything's controlled in the plant. Then if they want to take the aircraft home to put the engine instruments and interior, those types of things, they can. Or if they elect to, to keep it there and finish it, there's no reason they can't have a flying airplane in two to two and a half months. Yes. All right, good stuff. Well, that's a lot of good information. People that are of interest, uh, have an interest in the airplane, are going to want to follow you some more. Give us a web address. We'll put it up on the screen for everybody. Yes, we're at www.commutercraft.com. So okay. it's uh, fairly straightforward. 
we'd love to hear from you, and uh, if you sign in, we'll keep you posted on the developments as they occur. Sounds great, Richard. Thank we'll keep you. try and keep up with the commuter craft and add to the videos that we're doing and the writing about it. You can find that and all kinds of affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Richard Hogan and myself.